Hey everyone, Andrikats here and welcome back to my channel! As Dragonfly draws to a close, it's the perfect opportunity to revisit older expansions and expand your mount collection. BFA stands out as one such expansion, offering a big variety of mounts that can be obtained from just killing outdoor rare mobs. Since BFA is now old news, many of these rares are somewhat easier to track down and defeat. So today I've combined a list of 15 rare mounts for you to grab at your own pleasure. So buckle up and let's uncover these hidden treasures together! Before we delve into the list, I just want to highlight how crucial it is to have the Silver Dragon add-on. It shows the exact locations of all the rares on the map and notifies you whenever a rare appears on your screen, making your mount hunting experience a lot easier. Also, consider leveling a character on a low populated server, particularly on the role-playing realms. While it's not a must-do, trust me, it can significantly help you in finding some of the rarest mounts. Plus, if you purchase the new expansion bundle, you can always use the boost on a low populated realm instead. To start off with some easy mounts to collect, we need to go all the way back to Warfronts. In BFA we have this feature called Warfronts, where the Horde and Alliance will take turns controlling two specific zones, the Arathi Highlands and Darkshore. The cycle of control typically lasts for three weeks, with each faction undergoing a different phase every week. The three phases are known as Patrol, Contribute and Siege. Depending on which faction is patrolling and thus controlling the zone, the available rares and their locations will also change. Luckily, most of the rares can be farmed at any time, and for our convenience, the faction that controls the zone will also get a direct portal. These portals can be found near the Warfront table, either in Boral's Docks for the Alliance or Dazaralor for the Horde. If you can't see the portal, you may have a quest near the table. Completing the short quest chain that follows and returning to the docks will reveal the portal. However, if your faction is in the other two stages, you will have to fly there. And keep in mind that these are the BFA versions, so make sure to be in the present phase. Otherwise, you may have to talk to Zidormi to adjust the phase. Ok, since we cleared the air, now let's start with Darkshore. Here you can acquire 5 mounts by killing specific rares. The drop chance is around 5%, though many players have reported obtaining them a lot more frequently, suggesting a possible increase. Still, 5% you might think, ok, that's not too bad compared to other mounts in the game. But keep in mind that Darkshore rares work differently. And what I mean by that is they don't actually reset daily or weekly. Instead, they reset based on the Warfront cycle. Essentially, you get one chance per tune per event cycle, with a lockout resetting when your faction regains control of the zone and goes on patrol. Luckily, most of these rares will respawn about a minute after being killed, so to speed this up, having multiple outs to get even more attempts in each Warfront cycle is the most efficient way. After the first kill, the rares won't have a golden star or show up on the map, so you can pretty much anticipate when they can drop a mount. So since we went over the basics, let's go through the mounts one by one. It's important to know that depending on your faction, the rare might vary and the mount's name can also differ. For example, Black Po or Caged Bear that have the same model can drop from two different rares found near Zidormi. Each one is friendly to one faction, so you'll need to kill the opposing one. For Alliance players, Caged Bear drops from Agatha Wyrmwood and for the Horde players, Black Po drops from, well, Black Po. Moving on, the Kaldorai Night Saber and Dark Purple Saber drops from Shadowclaw for the Horde and Cross Blood Rage for the Alliance. Shadowclaw can be found near the shores of the central Darkshore, while Cross is located near the Maw of the Void, standing next to a wounded Grimhorde. In this specific case, Cross only spawns if the Alliance controls Darkshore, whereas Shadowclaw will only appear when the Horde is in control, so you can only engage them when your faction takes over the zone. Having alts in both factions means that you can utilize the Warfront cycles a lot more efficiently. And sometimes one faction can control both zones for a day or two, resulting in two portals being active at the same time. So that's something to keep in mind. The next mount is another saber, but this time with brown color. Depending on your faction, it has a different name, but it's essentially the same mount. The Capture Umber Knight Saber drops from Athil Dewfire for the Horde, while the Umber Knight Saber drops from Mox of the Beheader for the Alliance. I think it's pretty cool that Horde players get to ride sabers. It's no secret that they are mostly associated with Night Elves and the Alliance, so as a Horde player myself, I really do appreciate it. 
The next mount on the list is the Ashenvale Chimera, which is the only flying mount that drops in Darkshore. It drops from a Lashanir regardless of who controls the zone. You can find it along the mountains between Darkshore and Fellwood. I'm pretty sure the Iron Sky River is no longer available in the store, making this particular mount the only currently available two-headed mount. So that's extremely unique. Moving on, the Frightened Kodo is the final mount from Darkshore which is obtained by interacting with the same name NPC. The Kodo NPC is a lot trickier to find compared to other rares. It has a long spawn timer between 2 to 8 hours and walks around for just 2 minutes before going away but luckily it always spawns after server or zone resets. You can utilize this by going in a low populated realm, just simply log in every 15 minutes to trigger a zone reset and do the entire route spamming this macro, which I'll have in the description for you. Trial characters also still seem to work to this day, and if you want to learn more about this method, be sure to check out my dedicated video on this, where I share more details including which add-ons to use, along with other helpful tips. Now now let's go over to Arathi Highlands, where you can collect 5 more easy mounts. We have 4 grounds and 1 flying to go after. Remember what we've discussed so far for Darkshore also applies here, including the Warfront Cycle and the behavior of Rares. And don't forget that the faction in control of Arathi has a direct portal, while the opposing one must travel there conventionally. Let's start off with the flying mount, the Witherbug Darwin, which drops from a rare called Nimar the Slayer. He's located in Witherbug Village and can be found riding a bat. Coming as no surprise, the Darwin mount is indeed a huge bat, and given their scarcity in game, it's certainly a valuable addition. In the same area, you can find a patrol led by Beast Rider Kama, who rides on his raptor. And yes, you guessed it right, he drops a raptor mount. But not just any raptor, it's the Swift Albino. For Alliance players, having a raptor mount is quite uncommon, making it a cool addition to your collection. Next up, the Little Don King drops from Overseer Creeks, and his location changes depending on which faction currently controls Arathi. When the Alliance controls, Creeks is located at the Northern Mine, whereas if the Horde controls Arathi, you'll find him inside the Southern Mines. While not as flashy as some other mounds, the Little Donkey has its own charm. Another notable mount is Skull Reaper, a red raptor mount that drops from the NPC with the same name. Skull Reaper can be found running in the Central Valley of Arathi. Overall, a very cool mount, and I think she's a bit bigger compared to other raptors in the game. And for the final mount from Arathi, the rare you have to go after will depend if it's Alliance or Horde controlled. Doom Rider Helgrim spawns when the Alliance controls the zone and drops the Highland Mustang. On the other hand, Knight Captain Aldrin appears when the Horde controls the zone and drops the broken Highland Mustang. Interestingly enough, learning either mount will automatically change to the other if you log into a character of the opposite faction. Although they are both horses and we've encountered our fair share over the years, the models are more high res, featuring a more muscular appearance compared to older counterparts. Personally, I lean towards the Alliance one a bit more because of the white patterns. It's so good. I absolutely love all of the Warfront mounts, there's something incredibly thrilling about heading there and trying your luck to obtain them. Next up we are heading to Najadar. If you haven't unlocked that zone yet, or if you are on an alt, then I have narrowed down what you have to do. First things first, you have to be level 50, and then continue with the BFA campaign to meet up with Anduin or Sylvanas. Upon reaching Jaina or Nathanus down the line, don't forget that you can skip that scenario if you have already done it before. Continue following the quest chain in Boralus or Dazaralor until you're prompt to pick a zone on the table. Simply choose Tiragar or Zuldazar as your first zone and turn it in. Soon after, Gen Greymane or Nathanos will have the Send the Fleet quest available. You can quickly confirm that by taking a look on your map. This is basically the quest that leads to unlocking Najadar. It's best if you actually continue with the chain until you have unlocked the portal back to your main city, allowing you to travel back and forth to Najadar very easily. In Najadar we have two rare mounts to go after. The first one is the Silent Glider, a mana ray which has a slim chance to drop from Soundless. This rare can be found floating above big coral reefs, and it doesn't have one, but seven spawn points. To track the rare I am using Silver Dragon and I have disabled all the other rares in the zone. 
because it's just too many and it gets quite spammy very very quickly. The spawn timer for Soundless is usually between 2 to 8 hours and to add insult to injury it has a mere 1% chance to drop the mount. All in all it's a very tricky rare to find, let alone drop the mount. However, luckily Najadar is not as crowded as it used to be, so it's somewhat easier to locate Soundless. That being said, I still recommend switching to a low populated realm. You can kill it once per day for a chance of the mount, and of course if it doesn't drop don't let that discourage you, it's one of the lowest drop rates in the game. Fortunately you can farm it without as well, to increase your chances. You can also try with war mode on first and then easily switch it off if you go to the inn. And of course chromy time works as a completely different phase, so that's also an option to consider. To use chromy though you need to be between level 10 and 60. The second mount I have for you from Najadar is Febius. This lovely mount is an aquatic one but you can use it as well as a flying mount only in Najadar. To achieve this you need to purchase this specific item from the ancient relics vendor. Febius is a neutral mob that emerges from the water walls surrounding Najadar. It can spawn in four different locations and it has a long respawn timer between 2 to 10 hours. These two reasons alone make it extremely difficult to spot, but having friends or joining groups to evenly spread out will help cover all the necessary spots. To obtain this mount you don't have to kill the rare or anything, but you just need to take a selfie with him using either the item selfie camera or the toy version. But you have to be very very fast, he does a quick little walk around for a few minutes before disappearing into the waterfalls again. A regular screenshot will also not work and you may need to take a couple of selfies before being awarded with a mount, which you usually know that it goes directly into your bags. Some very useful tips before you go on with the hunt Add its ID beforehand in custom on Silver Dragon. He will not show up as a star on your minimap, and by manually adding it to Silver Dragon, it will warn you when he's seen. Next, prepare a macro ready to target Fabius. In any case, don't stress out if you don't get the mount from the first shot. Keep taking selfies by adjusting the camera, lay down, or even use a toy to shrink down if your character is just too big. I will say this is the most difficult rare to find, as not only does he has a long spawn timer, but he also does a quick lap for a few minutes before disappearing into thin air. So camping and walking away from the PC isn't really going to work in this case, you have to be actually present to quickly snap a selfie. And finally, for the last round of mounts we are heading to Mechagon. If you haven't unlocked it yet, you first need to complete the introductory quest for BFA and then kick off the Mechagon quest chain starting with the Legend of Mechagon. Horde players need to talk with Gazlo while the Alliance must talk to Tinkmaster Overspark. Eventually Horde players can teleport directly to the island by talking into this goblin right here, however alliance players aren't so lucky and will have to take a fly path from anywhere in Kulteras to travel there. Once you get to Mechagon we have two rare mounts to go after. The first one is the Junk Heap Drifter, a cool mechanical wheel mount which has a small chance to drop from Rust Feather. Rust Feather is a rare bear located on top of a cliff and usually spawns every 15 to 30 minutes. You can kill him once per day on each character. With such a low drop rate, around half percent, the best strategy is to park all of your alts there and just keep farming. As you can see, being in a high populated realm can be quite competitive, but as soon as I switched to an RP realm, it was just me. Luckily it's not a one shot, so even if other players are around, you can all secure a tag. While you are in Mechagon, you can also go for the second mount, a big spider called the Rusty Mechano Crawler. This drops from a spider rare known as the Arachnoid Harvester, found in this location. Similar to Rust Feather, it has a very small chance to drop the mount and around the same respawn timer of 15 to 30 minutes, so you can keep checking for both of them. She's also much easier to track as the moment she appears, you can see a message in chat. And that's all guys, obviously there are more mounts out there that you can go and hunt from BFA. This is by no means all of them, but I had to stop somewhere. If you want me to do more videos like this, please give this video a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for watching my content, subscribe and ring the bell for more. Good luck with whatever you are doing and I will see you all on the next one. Bye!